Hello and welcome to Retro Game Connect. I'm Dan Mastriani. I'm Ian Butterfield. And today we wonder, is it the shoes as we play NBA Jam for Super Nintendo? What? It'll make sense in a minute. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in the console version. Ian doesn't <laughs> play sports games, so... I don't either, but this is the kind of sports game I like because it has very little serious sports to it. Uh, NBA Jam basically sort takes... Of, so, so it's the WWE of No, that has rules. Games? They just ignore them half the time. Well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, NBA Jam is one of the earlier... I don't know if I want to call it an extreme sports game, but kind of... Extreme! Arcade sports game. It kind of followed on from uh, one of Midway's earlier games, uh, Arch Rivals. Which, in that, basically, you get the ball through the hoop, and that's all you really have to worry about. They stripped out most of the rules. Like, you know, there are no fouls. Uh, it's my impression of someone playing yeah. basketball. Yeah, you don't have to worry about fouls. It's just, you know, there, it's two on two instead of having full teams. Uh, there's still. I don't think there's a shot. I'm, I'm trying to remember now. I'm not sure if there's a shot clock. There is still goaltending, so you have to watch out for that. Goaltending is, is catching the ball on its way down to the hoop. So when we're playing, don't do that because then the, the other team will still be, will be awarded their points whether the ball was going to go in or not. Okay. Yeah. You got to be careful about that. Yeah, yeah that's well, Chris. This is actually the first NBA licensed arcade game. Woo! Yeah. So they actually, um, it was created by Mark Tumel, who's you know longtime uh, Midway employee. Uh, he's the leader of the team. Him, you know, guys like Mark Tumel, Sal DeVito, various you know like usual suspects at uh, at Midway. And they actually uh, had the idea. You know, they wanted to do something with their digitized video. You know, they earlier been using it uh, since NARC in the late 80s, which was like basically a side-scrolling shooting game where you play as NARCs and uh, have to catch drug dealers by shooting them. Yeah. It's a pretty huge... And so. I thought Saints Row was weird. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they had, they had this... You know, this is what set Midway apart is they had the digitization technology. Uh, we talked... To, about a little when we were playing Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, we played Mortal Kombat too. It had the uh, their own cut, their own uh, digitization environment based around uh, the target card. And uh, they were, you know, looking for other ways to use it. You know, they'd done some shooting games, and they think, well, it would be good for this. Would be a sports game. Uh, they they'd done uh, high impact football, I believe. And they uh, decided they wanted to try and get a license for the game. So they actually created a pitch video, which you can actually find on YouTube. I'll try to remember to put a link what can't you find in the on description. YouTube? Yeah, uh, Someone actually recently uh, covered it, but uh, created a pitch video where they you know, had a pre-production version of the game, you know, like early alpha version of the game. It was showing off some of the features. And uh, they actually promised a bunch of things that didn't end up in the final game. Like, uh, so, so you're saying it was a politician? Yeah, right. At some point they were... Uh, Political slam. <laughs> hey, Bill Clinton is in the game. What? <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll get to that. They, uh, they had, at one point they were going to say they were going to have multiple camera angles and uh, like tips from the coaches and things like that. Most of that didn't make it into the game, but honestly, it, I don't think it really needed it. You you have like a side view game and they they kind of advertise well okay it's going to pan back and forth just like you would uh, if you're watching basketball on TV. I know you're not really a sports guy. I don't know if you've watched this basketball game at least once. A lot of times you'll see the side on shot of the court, and as people are moving from one end of the court, they'll kind of pan back and forth. Does it mean anything to you at all? But why is Bill Clinton in it? I tell you, we'll we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Right now, we're still talking about the promotional video. But as you know, they had some back behind the scene footage of uh, capturing the actors who performed the moves. Uh, they had some you know, amateur. Do they have to use ultra balls or? No, regular basketballs. 
they had uh, some amateur basketball players from the local, you know, they were based in Chicago, so they had some local players. Uh, actually, one of, let me get the names here, because one of them which did actually go on to play in the NBA. Uh, let's see, you know, so uh, video capture was uh, Willie Air Morris Jr., uh, Todd McLaren, and Stephen Howard. Stephen Howard was in college at the time, but after graduating, he was actually signed to the Utah Jazz. So he actually became a professional. Jazz. Yeah. And that actually happened before the game was released. So by the time the game came out, he was a NBA player. Hmm. So that is uh, pretty cool. Jazz. Yeah, jazz hands. And they, had, you, know, you know, prior to um, saying in the pitch video, NBA had been really reluctant to license the game because, you know, they were based in New York and there were a lot of CD arcades in New York, you know, dark dimly lit places, you know, you might be drug dealers hanging around, kind of things like that. So they're, no, seriously, like, you know, drug dealers would be hanging around these places. That's not a joke. That's, that's something that actually happened. I know. <laughs> I know. And, you know, arcades had the bad reputation, especially in the area where the NBA was headquartered. Well, you know, a lot of gamers just don't give a damn about a bad reputation. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't want to be associated with arcades. So that's why they, they but after the promotional video, they actually managed to convince them. And, you know, finally they had an NBA game in arcades. And it's kind of, you know, kind of crazy. One of, one of the big features of the game is you have these ridiculous over-the-top dunks. And that didn't actually even start the game. You know, Mark Jarmel talks about how he had more realistic games to start with. You know, he's adjusting the height, try to get it look right. And he says, oh, let's make it a little higher. We'll make it a little higher. And eventually he got kind of ridiculous. And he's like, <laughs> this is pretty fun. And now, so the question is... Did they release a different version that's Space Jam? There was a Space Jam video game, but that was a few years later. I don't think Midway had anything to do with it. You know they're doing another one? Uh, I had heard that, yeah. With, like, LeBron James? Yeah. Should be interesting. Oh, <laughs> uh, Space Jam. So, you know, they, they, they really wanted that big NBA logo to help promote the game. You know, and like... Bah. Yeah, they started adding the crazy dunks, and like they went from trying to be somewhat realistic to be like this, a show just crazy reaching the all the way across the court with their arm just growing. No, no, not way. quite. But uh, yeah, so it's real NBA license. It has real NBA players, uh, basically you know two per team, because you know they moved it to a two and two format. Uh, they started off. that and they the crazy dunks and I'm completely losing my train of thought here I'm having some trouble I'm sorry guys and they uh, you know basically what they did is they, they had their their motion capture guys who would do the moves and they basically just swapped in the heads of the players it's actually one of the early games that had stuff like big head codes ah big head mode yeah so that, that was that's for some thing. reason was just in so many games yeah, so there's the conversion. I never got that. No. I, I think in the NBA Jam, they wanted to show off the photos of the player heads. Yeah, it was pretty cool in the arcade. It would have a scaling effect, too. So when players would move back and forth on the court, the, the sprites would kind of scale up and down to add more depth to it, which unfortunately isn't in the Super Nintendo version. But, yeah, they didn't want to try to program that into the Super Nintendo version. They want to keep moving fast. Got to go fast. Yep, got to go fast. You know, so they'd uh, released in the arcades, and I don't know if it was a combination of the NBA thing, or a combination of timing, a combination of the easy-to-pick-up gameplay. This game ended up being a huge hit. It was gigantic. I've got some numbers here. Uh, they sold... I've got a few numbers, yeah. too. They sold 20,000 cabinets. Seven. Wow. 20,000? 20, 20,000. That's... Uh, the game was released in uh, the arcades in, I think, 93? Yes, 93. By 94... It had made one billion one hundred million dollars. One billion dollars. Yes. Yeah. So over a billion dollars in revenue wow. by nineteen ninety four. Wow. This is one of the most successful arcade games of all time. Can't say I was making that kind of money in nineteen ninety four. No. 
Well, I mean, unless you got some, like, you know, baby modeling ads. <laughs> like, super child actor stuff. I think there would be an escrow for you or something. I don't know. I wish. Yeah, there, there, were, a few, uh, there were actually, though, a few uh, NBA players, big names, that were missing from the game. Uh, Michael Jordan is not in any um, retail release of NBA Jam because he, he, was owns, in Space Jam. he owns his own likeness. Um, so he wasn't part of the NBA player's license. So they weren't able to put him in the game. They were actually did they also put in, like, Michael Morden? No, no, they just did other, other players from the team. Like, you know, Scottie Pippen is a headline player on the Bulls in NBA Jam. And actually, uh, I'm not even sure why uh, Pey- Gary Payton is not in it. I guess he just didn't make the cut. It wasn't a licensing thing. But after the game came out, he was, like, really into it. And he actually contacted them and was like, how do, I, how do I get in this game? And they said, well, we just need these pictures of you. And he's like, here they are. And apparently Jordan liked the game too. So they got pictures from them. They created a special version of the game, which you know, that was never like, made available for sale. It's just for, for, just for them. In which there's a special team of Michael Jordan and Gary Payton. <laughs> And you could you could you could play as the team of them. See, back in the day, to get DLC, you had to be a celebrity. <laughs> yes. So Jordan has his own special version of the game where he can play as himself. And actually, uh, Shaq was in the arcade version, but he he loved it so much he bought two arcade machines for himself: one to leave it at his house, and one that he had shipped around with him so he could play while they were on tour. <laughs> yeah. So show. Sh- sh- you know, like, the NBA players, like, really love this game. And, uh, actually, uh, Berkeley is in the arcade version and the first printing of the home version. But uh, after it was released, he signed a deal with Accolade to make a game called Berkeley Shut Up and Jam. Basically, it's own, their own, like, NBA Jam ripoff. So because of that deal, they had to take them out of later printings, which, is unfortunately, is what I have. So my version does not have Charles Barkley in it. So... What you're saying is these NBA players mm-hmm. loved the game so much that they just spent hours playing with themselves. Ian, family-friendly show. Hey, you're the one saying it's not family-friendly. Okay, okay. Just saying Michael Jordan spent hours yeah. playing a game. Mm-hmm. He played himself. Okay. Or he played as another character while his character was there. So he was playing with himself. Yep. So anyhow, uh, yeah, so this game is actually uh, full of hidden characters, too. Can you play as Bonk? No, no, no. Wrong company. Done. Yeah, so uh, basically, you know, it's kind of an in-joke. The developers kind of just took some pictures of themselves and put themselves in in hidden characters. They didn't expect anyone to find this. But they figured there's something they would do around the office when up, they were up, down, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. There's also EA the wrong company. Yeah, that's, that's Konami. I, 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 Ian doesn't know. It's the Konami details. code. It's the well, Konami I know code. it's the Konami code. Well, it's other it people have put Konami the, games. Yeah, but other people have put the Konami game, the Konami code in their game, even though I guess, it's not a Konami game. I guess game. it did. It did eventually become popular enough that, uh, but they, you know, people found them, and when they got together with the claim, who did the home port? Well, who? Hired other people to do the home port, but uh, who published the home port? And claim was like, "Oh, we like these hidden characters. We want more." Because people did eventually find, you know, the characters in the arcade, and it, they it was actually a claim that came up with the idea of like putting like celebrities and such in the game. So this is how people like Bill Clinton ended up as hidden characters in NBA Jam, who was you know president at the time. <laughs> this is yeah, this is yeah, during uh, during his run as president. And they had uh, all kinds of crazy people. Uh, another fun thing about this game is uh, Mark Tamell, big Pistons fan. All right, Pistons had a major rivalry with the Chicago Bulls. You know, they're both local teams. So, or what Tamell did is he actually put a little bit of code in the game. So, yeah, a little a close game. In the end of the game. Uh, when Bulls would take last-minute shots, it would dramatically lower their chances of, of getting baskets. So the game is actually biased against the Chicago Bulls when they were playing 
The Pistons. <laughs> As, I'm not sure if that's in the home version, but in the arcade version, yeah, the game is the game is biased against the Bulls, but only when they're playing the Pistons. That's like if a Red Sox or a Yankees fan was like the lead designer on a an MLB game, and they twisted the code so that their team won more when yep. they were facing each other. That's exactly like that because that's what he did. The secret code you can type in, they just all fight each other with baseball bats. Yep, there you go. That sounds like a baseball game I'm more interested in playing. Right. <laughs> but, uh... Just using the baseball bat and, like... Yep. Other than that, uh, last rising. thing, of course, one of the most famous things about the game is the announcer. Uh, they didn't get a uh, actual professional basketball announcer. They weren't really big enough for that yet. Uh, they got a... Local guy who to done some work from a man named uh, Tim Kitzrow. Right now, he'd gotten to start with Midway. Uh, apparently, he was in a band with some people who worked as music composers for Midway uh, back when they were still really, really big pinball company. I mean, they, they were still pretty big in pinball in the early '90s too. Well, I mean, they had a lot of pinball machines out there, and mm-hmm. so they were like, they really just knew their stuff on pinball. You might say they were wizards with them. I was wondering where they were going with that. It could really work yeah. their magic with yeah. that. Such a supple wrist. Yeah, unfortunately, this guy's name is Tim, not Tom, so you, you can't go there with that. But uh, apparently they were having trouble finding someone to play Mr. Howell on the Gilligan's Island table. So they're like, hey, Tim, can you, can you do a Mr. Howell impression? He's like, yeah, sure. So they hired him. He needed Mr. Howell on Gilligan's Island. And that kind of led to more work for him. Like, you know, eventually they needed someone to do Rod Serling's voice in the Twilight Zone table, and that was his first major role. He played Rod Serling because obviously Rod Serling was no longer available by this time. Sure, yes, obviously, because I knew that. Rod Serling would have been dead in, like, the 90s, so. He's dead, Jim. Yes. You do know who Rod Serling is, yes. I'm guessing it was the host of Twilight Zone. He was the host of the Twilight Zone. Have you seen the Twilight Zone? Um, no. No? no. Really? You've never watched any of the countless marathons the Sci-Fi Channel does? Uh, no. No, no? No. Wow. No. That's a pretty big show. Yeah. You, you haven't seen any of the Twilight Zone? No. No. Oh. That's his pony. Well, the, no, there you go. You have some homework. I still have to finish season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> and season one of Daredevil now it, Jessica Jones is coming out and Gotham just started again anyhow and, uh, and Doctor Who has already started again and yeah. but that wouldn't be the case when this actually airs so don't worry about it <whistles> so you know he, he did the voices a bunch of their uh, pinball games so they needed an announcer and they brought him in to do the announcer voice he was actually paid 50 bucks an hour this is the first video game he worked on. You know, he'd only done pinball games before then. I, I wish I was getting paid fifty bucks an right. hour. I mean, the, considering how the much, high life. yeah, considering how much money the game made, some people are like, "Well, you, you kind of feel because uh, you know he made like nine hundred bucks total." So people are like feel you feel like Ripper was like, "No, like I've never done voiceover in a video game before." I was pretty happy to be getting fifty bucks an hour. You yeah. know, he didn't expect anything more. But he actually ended up, his performance ended up being really iconic and a big part of what sold the game. Does he still announce for the games? Did he ever continue He's, to announce? They brought him back. Yeah, he actually, this kind of you know, brought him more into voiceover. So he did a lot more work for, for Midway. Uh, actually, I'm sure pretty, he's no Nolan North. No. Who's in no. like everything. Yeah, but he did more work for Midway. I'm not sure what he's doing now, but like, you know, around. Uh, Turn of the century, he was. Uh, I read. I saw an interview with him with IGN where he was talking about how they'd recently done NBA Showtime. Like eventually, I guess uh, the NBA actually controlled the NBA Jam name, so at some point, Acclaim was able to uh, get MB, the NBA to license NBA Jam to them. So they were making NBA Jam sequels instead of Midway, which were not great. So. The guys, yeah, the guys who actually made NBA Jam at Midway were like, well, okay, we'll just do our own series. And they came out with a game called NBA Showtime. And Tim Kitchrow. Showtime. Yeah, he did, he did uh, the voices for that. And he was talking about 
just how much voice they did for that since he was local and he could just like drop into the studio whenever they just like you know we need more voice here we need more voice there and they just recorded more and more voice samples and it's talking about this, what a complex you know varied play by play it has hmm. so you know, it's pretty, he did a lot of work for a lot of their a lot of their sports games and he, like even at the time he was talking about how they since the games had gotten bigger they were doing more hiring of actual sports announcers like I think uh, Marv Albert actually did some sports games, and they were, you know, again, people who did the real games, and they weren't really getting the kind of performance from them because a lot of them are, they're not actors. They're, they're reacting to the game that they're watching, and the excitement comes from, like, wow, what a play. They're, actually, ex- they're actually excited. By I can see that being a problem. So when they're trying to act, it's not really there. So... Yeah, I can see. Yeah, that having an problem. actor can kind of, you know, if it, if you can't act the character properly, you just end up with Italian Akbar. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, look at that dunk he just did here. Oh, oh, hey. off the rim! What a brick! It's a trap here. Forget about it. This guy mustn't be strong with the force. He can't hit that. <laughs> Yeah, but he actually mentioned how when he was doing the home version of the game, he had to talk really fast because the space limitations, they couldn't fit as much voice in. Yeah, he's talking about how he's shouting his lines as quickly as he possibly can so they could come up with shorter voice clips to cram into the game. That's annoying. Yeah. Sure. But I mean... I've done voiceover stuff. It's it's bothersome. I think it's... uh, Well, I think we're probably... Start playing it, but we'll talk about. Uh... Let's get ready to basketball. We'll talk about how it compares with the arcade game because I I did play a decent amount of that in the arcade. But NBA Jam. I prefer NBA Jelly. Mm. I can I can see how you would. I like to put it with my MLB peanut butter. So I've only brought two controllers today, but this is a four-player game. Yeah, so the home version does have four-player. Kind of weird. I was opening the menu and it went to the attract mode. That's fun. All right, so we got some options. Uh, one thing we can go ahead and leave this stuff on. Uh, here's the computer assistance. The computer will cheat. Basically, to keep games sh- close, it will raise the uh, throw percentage for the losing team and lower it for the winning team. Because it's an arcade game, they don't want people winning too easily. So, though the home version is not nearly as bad as the arcade. I don't think I've ever won a game in the arcade. So, as you can see... Pass turbo. Okay. Yep. I understand. You know what you're doing? Maybe. Yes. I'm probably going to mess up. That's all right. It's not that hard. You'd be surprised. So, we'll do a, we'll do, we'll do a team game. I'll back you up. Because I'm going to so, break it. Yep, we're going to enter our initials. Let's go ahead and play as some of the secret characters. So, why don't you be Al Gore? You'll be my vice president. There's a code right there that you want. Hold L and R and hit A. Yeah, hopefully you did it right. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and press the button. I may, I may have messed up because I don't have any record. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so in the arcade, um, the game would actually keep track of your stats you would put in your initials and your birthday oh i'm al oh, gore yeah i blew it oh that's all right uh do you have do you care i don't care i uh, know i used to play phoenix that's that's what i would do uh yeah sure i'll be dan marley why not oh wait wait oh. uh marley or johnson i'll be uh johnson he's got better stats <laughs> So you would actually put in so, your initials and, and a date. And in the arcade, you just had to put it like the right birth date to get the secret characters. But since they removed that from this version and used a password instead... Oh, uh, get ready. The button. There you go. Um, um, what? Yeah, sorry, we're starting out right off. Uh, All right. What? 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 I'm guessing what? you didn't... Uh... I don't know what's going on. All right, we're the purple guys. Okay, that's good to know. Ah, uh, sorry, I passed instead of shot. All right, so you can go ahead and shove, guys, as much as you like. Here's your big old dunk. 
So this is pretty. Uh, this is pretty fast paced. So it's a little hard to talk about. Uh, how do I? How do I punch people? All right. Uh, all so is it, you got your right. You got your pat. You got uh, the X button, which is steal. And you got the. Uh, it said nothing about stealing in the control schemes. Yeah, that was for just for offense. There you go. So let's pause the game for a second so I can show you the controls. Okay. So steal, block, right? You know, jump for the block. Okay. But if you're using turbo, which as you see, you have the limited meter for your turbo, this becomes a shove. And honestly, there's not much reason not to just shove guys all, all the time because there are no fouls. Okay. So just knock them over, steal the ball. Okay. And, you know, this is going to be shoot when you're on offense, so you want to just turn on turbo, run at the run at the basket and okay have your turbo on and go for the dunk when do i go super saiyan <laughs> if you get three baskets in a row you are on fire and you have infinite turbo oh okay okay you ready <coughs> is it a yes <coughs> i'm gonna assume that's a yes Uh, so we gotta. I try to get these guys out of your way. Uh, another tip: uh, you are more accurate if you shoot at the top of your jump. Oh! I punched him in the face. Good work. And now I'm gonna dunk it. Even though my guy kind of looks like a kind of looks like a midget. I don't think uh, Kevin Johnson is that short. Oi! <laughs> Oi! Oi! The game kind of makes him look like he is. Ding, 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 Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. I think I shoved you by mistake. Dug it. What? Oh. There we go. All right. We got it tied up. Yeah, getting the right buttons can be uh, kind of tough. Oh. What? All right. Ding, 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 ding. So as you can see, we got the voices. Uh, there are obviously fewer than are in the arcade, but I think it's still pretty talkative. Nope. Oh, kind of up there. Obviously, that was mean. Yeah, obviously this runs a lot faster than a real basketball game. Well, I guess you do get a little... I guess they want more specific coaching tips, so but you do get those little tips there. Global warming! Yeah. Come on, Al, you invented the internet. You should be good at basketball. Yes! Oh. I go. got the thing. Good work. I had the wrong one. Oh. You have the ball. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Maybe not for long. No, you got... Okay, so there is a shot clock. Also, once you're already up in the dump, you can... Yeah. Up on the dunk, you can really you can let go of the turbo button. You don't really need it anymore, so that's a good way to give yourself some what? time to recover turbo. But I've, that's not what was supposed to happen there. It's a really fast-paced game. Oh, 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 nice. Oh, yeah. I'll go for the three. Nothing but net. There are no dangerous emissions on that three. Boom. So as you see, yeah, so basically, you know, once... Uh, Termel had uh, made the dunks super high. They just kind of shifted the whole focus of the game and just said, you know what? <laughs> Let's just make these dunks ridiculous. Oh, Oi. no, no, no. Stop them, stop them, stop them. Aww. I was getting close to on fire, too. So, yeah, it's pretty simple. Just get the ball in the hole. Ah, uh... oh, I almost blocked it, too. I can't tell what's going on half the time. <laughs> the game moves at a very fast clip. Keep in mind they wanted you to put lots of quarters in this. In the arcade, uh, you would have to put in another quarter for every quarter of the game. You know, basic basketball is broken up into four quarters, right? But he was on the ground! Oof. I think I just got on fire. That's, that's trouble for us. And every for every quarter, you'd have to pay a quarter to play. Jerks. Yeah. So we got our get our halftime stats. 
or first half rather. Halftime is kind of football, but yeah. But he is he's really exaggerated the sport. He's nice and simple. Oh, he's on fire, so we're in trouble now. If we can make a basket, he loses on fire. It'll also uh, eventually just go away on its own. It's uh, limited. I don't actually know how to do half the crap in this game. I'm just running and shooting. That's all right. That's all you do. It's this what it's stripped down to. They're getting a real runaway with us here. I mean, you can pass and you can shoot. And that's the whole game. Al Gore, you suck at playing basketball. But he has ridden the mighty moonworm. Yes. I'm gonna just... Come on, I'm trying to punch you in the face. What? What? what yeah, why? watch. Okay. Um, what? Rule of basketball. Once you stop dribbling, you have to, uh... But I didn't stop. All right, whatever. I'll cover you. Go. Oh, that was just mean. It's actually, uh, you know, if you stop and do those elbows, then, uh, then you can't move again. So you gotta stay there and either pass or shoot the three. So obviously, in the arcade, the announcer had a lot more variety. How do they? The graphics were a lot bigger. Oh, you jerk. That's all right. It's teamwork, see? I got the rebound, and I put it in. Oh. There you go. Nice work, Al Gore. You've almost caught up. Ah, okay. but, if he, but if he lights on fire, does that, does that kind of counter his whole global warming thing? Sorry, mm. I, I'm, I'm just harking on him for that. I can't help it. For playing uh, as Bill Clinton, I'd be... Yeah, I'm sorry. I tried. I, I know. I, I messed up. So this game moves so fast, it's really hard for us to actually say things about Yeah, it. I don't know what to say about it. Besides, it's... Ah. Oh, there you go. Okay, here's another fun fact. What's it? Boom Shakalaka kind of was popularized by this game. I think they actually got it out of a 70s song, and I, I forgot to write down which one. <laughs> But people basically started saying it uh, about basketball after NBA Jam. He used to drive me crazy with that when I was playing this game as a kid. He would, he would get like terrible shot and all stuff, even when the ball would go in. He's like, "How? It can't be that terrible." I scored. Yes. Nice. You're keeping us in there. We're the three pointers. Go dunk it. Ah! Uh, How did he get the ball? It can be hard to keep track. Here, pass it. Hit the X button. Here, here we go. I think it's also possible to do uh, alley oops by uh, passing to a guy after he's already jumped. I'm not sure though. That might be uh, something they added in later games. Swish. Yeah, I don't think alley oops are in this version. I'm not sure. Steal the ball! I'm trying! Oh, there we go. Don't let him dunk. Ah. Oh, well, that was frustrating. It's all tied up. Let's see if we can keep it out of overtime. Let's see if I oh, can I got keep it. track of what I'm doing. <laughs> The game is pretty chaotic. All right, I'm heating up. Let me see if I can get on fire. I don't think we have time. Nope. Ah, uh, I didn't have time. Hey, we won, shot. though. We did win. Woo! Woo, we win. Did a sports thing. Did a sports thing. Ah, uh, so, I mean, that's about the game. 
I, I don't know if we want to try and say anything more intelligent about it, but I think we, uh, there's one other thing we can do. I don't know if we have to play a final game, we'll check. Uh, I have a password that will take us to the end of the game. And so let's see if we can get the, uh, get the ending here. Yes, initials. Yeah, I think this is basically unnecessitated by, uh, the game not having a battery backup, which is something they could uh, put in the arcade. Damn, I'm not sure if we're actually going to be playing, so if you want to go ahead and just... Well, do you want a secret character? Or you just yeah. Want... All right. Any secret characters that are fun that aren't Bill Clinton, or am I going to play as Bill Clinton? Uh, yeah, everything else I think that I have codes for are um, developers. So I have Warren play... Moon. I don't know who that is. Uh, yeah. How do I play as Bill Clinton? All right. Uh, so it should be A R. So highlight K. Hey. Hold L and start and press X. That was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what happened. Remember the uh, the start button is working on the first controller too well. Yes. So that's what messed me up. Got this. All right. So I don't know if we're actually going to play or if we're just uh, going to get straight to the ending. We'll see. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. All right. Uh, sure. I'll be damn morally. I keep pressing the wrong button. Start. There we go. We'll see if we actually have to play the last game or if we just get the ending right away. Uh, we do. So we have to beat the Dallas Mavericks. Okay. Didn't we just play uh, them? Yeah, yeah, press the uh, juice. Oh, I think you uh, put in the code. So I don't know... Uh, how good the uh, secret character stats are. I know, for instance, Mark Jamal has like super awesome stats. I'm not sure how good the president is. We'll find out. Uh, so, yeah, I'm leading already. Let's try and keep it up. Yeah, another thing I'm uh, missing from the home game that's in the arcade is uh, in the arcade, of course, they recorded all the games. So the announcer would actually say the players' names. So, for instance, I'm playing as Dan Marley, and if I'd like go for a three-point shot, I'd be like Marley with the three. I don't. Why off couldn't the rim. I dunk? Well, for one, I had the ball. Yeah, but it was in the air. Uh, I don't think it really just lets you jam it in. I'm not sure. Oh, see, I got goaltending. What? Because I caught the ball on its way down. Remember when I told you not to do that? Yeah. And that's what, well, that's I don't, why. I don't know exactly what that is, but. It's catching the ball on the way down. I didn't, yeah, I don't know me. They I, have way too much turbo. Oh, they, uh, hmm. I'm just noticing they don't even seem to have turbo meters. Is that just because there's a computer? Do you remember? Did you notice? I don't remember. Yeah, well, this is the final game, so... It's the final countdown! Oh! This is, the, uh, this is a bit tougher than the game we played. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I really don't. Oh, well, you're getting threes. That's good. Because I, like, try to shove someone, and then they just don't... I can't tell where I am... Oh, no. Okay, so I tried to shoot there, but instead I just moved the ball around, and so then I had to pass it to you. Oh! Wow. Yeah, we're getting destroyed. See, I don't know. How, how am I supposed to dunk? All right. To dunk, run at the hoop. While you have still have the turbo hold down, hit, hit the... See, every time I do that, it just it throws. You have to get within a certain distance. And also, uh, how close you have to be depends on your character stats. If you have a good dunk stat, you can, uh, you can be farther away from the hoop than if you have a bad one. But you seem to have pretty good threes, though, so that's kind of, uh, that's kind of useful. But the, oh, no! So you do that, we, they get points. They do that, they get points. What, 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 I don't, I just don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I really don't. 
I can't provide commentary because sports games are so not my thing. I mean, it's super unrealistic sports game, though. Yeah, because sometimes if you shove them, they go down, and sometimes they don't. Oh, if I man. shove someone, they go down. It's all right. We, we, can still, we can still do this. Look, see, we're making a comeback. Probably because the computer is probably cheating in our favor to keep the game tight. Oh, you got it. There you go. See? But why nice didn't two -pointer. I dunk it? Because uh, you weren't moving toward the hoop. See, watch. I'm running straight at the hoop, and now I dunk. You want to make sure you don't stop before you press the button. All right, I'm heating up, so let me see if I can make the next shot, and I can get on fire, and then I can just abuse the turbo. Dang it. Never mind. Da! I try to shove, and then I do random karate moves. I, I get the feeling you're, you're not enjoying your NBA Jam experience yet. No. Oh, look, you got a three. You're keeping us in the game. And, well, I had to go for it. Didn't have time to get any closer. It's all tied up. We can still do this. Remember, this is the... Sports games are just way too hectic for me. Because you see, when you're shooting someone, once you shoot them, they're gone. That's one less variability. You look see you get seven field goals. You're doing good. Hell you. There you go. Three pointer. And you're heating up, so I'm so gonna I'd try to get run. you the next uh never mind. Yeah, I think part of the problem is they seem to have a guy just kinda like waiting at the end of the court to catch long passes, you know? In the meantime we're both going for the hoop. Jeez. And boom goes the dynamite. What? They blocked it. Yeah, but get away. <laughs> See, this is why I should be stabbing them. They're definitely smothering us with that defense. The computer is always like more accurate than you are in any kind of game you play, you know? Get the ball, get the ball. Ah. But how did... I thought I had the ball. I know. Sometimes it's it's weird because you think you'd be picking it up and you don't. But how did he pass through us beating him up? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. His physics engine is highly flawed. You got it. You got it. Uh. All right. Giving us points. Yes. Crazy windmill dunk. I think also the computer has a bit of the advantage in that it doesn't have to worry about being on screen. Yeah. So whereas we'd be like, oh, well, we can't hang on the backcourt because we won't know where we are. They're hanging on the backcourt all day. Oh, yeah, you're doing good with the threes, though. You're keeping us in the game. I mean, I knew Obama played basketball, but I didn't know... Uh, <laughs> t -t 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 no. You got it. D no, why aren't you Pass throwing? It, it just wasn't throwing the ball. All right. <laughs> I can diagnose this. If you tap the button really quick, you get a head fake. A what? Like you kind of try to fake them out. So you get them to jump and go for the block at the wrong time. So that's what's happening. You're, you're tapping the button, you're, you're, you're trying to fake them out instead of going for the shot. So if you want to go for the shot, hold the button. See, again, right there. Yeah, it said the steal, and then we didn't get the ball. So, uh, I don't know. No. no. Oh, boy. That's a problem. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they are worrying about their turbo meter as it is, so... See, why did he keep the ball? I, I don't know. Sometimes they drop and sometimes they don't. I'm not sure what determines it. I haven't seen the but programming of the game. doesn't make any sense. I mean, I'm sure there's something. All right, I'm going to stay on this side of the court if All you right. get it. Fair enough. Get it. Get it. Pass it. Oh, 
Yeah. They got this point. No, they got the point. Because they can't tell. So the distancing in this is horrible. Well, they had to scale down the graphics quite a bit from the arcade. It's, it's easier to tell there. The, uh, you know, the <laughs> graphics are bigger. That's not what I told my character to do. It's okay. It worked out. I shouldn't have what? done that. My Ch character doesn't have good three-point stats. Oh, oh, oh. Get it. Get it. Okay, run, run, run. I'm running. I'm just going to dunk because I'm not good at threes. And I don't actually know what I'm doing because I can't dunk. <laughs> Quick, shoot. D I, I hit the shoot button, then I don't shoot. Yeah, you got, you got, I think you got to hold it down longer. Uh, I think I lost. It's only the third quarter, though, isn't it? Is it the third, third quarter? I thought it was the fourth. No, it was the fourth. Oh, we lost by three. That's rough. I guess we're not going to get the ending. Uh, I don't think it'd be good for our blood your blood pressure if we <laughs> went any farther. You had 21 steals. That's nice. I have no clue what's going on in this game. So, you probably noticed the commentary wasn't great on that. Uh, as I mentioned, like, probably three or four times, NBA Jam is really fast-paced. Uh, it probably takes a little while to get a hang of it. I did play it an awful lot as a kid. Uh, of course, as I mentioned in the opening, it was huge in the arcades. You couldn't go to an arcade without finding an NBA Jam machine. Okay, I think I can see now. Yeah. So, uh, the arcade game obviously had larger, more powerful hardware, so larger character graphics. Maybe you could actually see what was going on? Yes. Uh, they actually, you know, as I mentioned, they had the scaling, so they kind of move in and out and kind of give you a better depth Because you think you're on the same plane as the other person while you're shoving them, but actually, for some reason, you're not. Yeah, so... That did make it a little e some things a little easier, but of course, this all game wanted your quarter, so it was a bit more ruthless. But, uh, as I mentioned, I don't think I've ever beaten the computer in NBA Jam. In the arcade. At, the, at home, I've been able to do it. In the arcade, I just lost again and again. It was, it was ridiculous. But it was like You'd such think that if you put in the four quarters to play all the way to the end, they'd at least let you win. Yeah, but... Jerks. Uh, no, no. Yeah, you could buy you'd buy uh, games for a quarter. You could put you know all four quarters in and buy the full game. Uh, it's such a audio video like spectacle at the time. I mean, you know, this is at the time some of the best graphics that you can see. It's like you know big player characters, uh, huge sprites, there's tons of sounds. You know, there's so much more voice in the arcade. Yeah, like uh, you know they'd call it all the player names. You know. Like, let's say I was playing... Bill as, Clinton. Yeah. As, let's say I was playing as uh, Dan Marley, and I went for a three-point shot. He'd be like, Marley, with the three. And if it didn't go in, he'd be like, ugly shot. <laughs> like, or off the rim. Here's uh, If you were doing really well in the game, occasionally you get a sound clip. we are like, is it the shoes? Because, <laughs> you know, basketball and, and sneakers oh. are very close association okay so it's like you know these great shoes that making them good at basketball well i mean it was in that flubber movie exactly <laughs> there's a reference yeah you, know, you, you know you 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 get those three baskets in the row and be like he's on fire you know you dunk and the, you actually set the uh hoop on fire and you it, it's really fast reading it's in even in the super nintendo game but you, we probably just didn't get a chance to see it, but you, you actually singe off the net on the hoop when you're on fire. It burns away. Okay. I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's possible in the home version, but you know, it's possible to break the rim. Uh, rather, break the backboard, you know. Backboard or shatter if you get enough dunks <laughs> in a row. Oh, so yeah, there's always, like, you know, there's all this crazy stuff happening. It's just very high-speed kinetic really arcade what you think of when it was an arcade game like high energy go 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 
quick play sessions. I like the Star Wars arcade game. Not the one we played. The one where you can play the original trilogy. And you can you shoot them with blasters. And... I know. I feel like this is a quintessential arcade experience. Uh, I get the impression you did not enjoy. There was too much going on with not enough responsiveness. Mm. Like I'd shove a person, but they, they wouldn't shove and they'd just walk around. Except I was shoving them. And then, like, I'd go stand at the ball to pick it up, and then suddenly the ball was just not there. Yeah, things can be a little imprecise. I'll give you that. Uh, it, that I don't like imprecision. Mm. It bothers me. Well, I know. I, I did play this game a lot, so I probably had time to get used to the controls. Even now, have, not having played it for years, I still remembered how to play NBA Jam. So. Yeah. No, I did. Bothered. You might enjoy it more if you got used to it, but I can uh, kind of understand it's. Well, seeing as I never your... owned a Super Nintendo, yeah, probably not gonna play it. On the upside, there is uh, more modern NBA Jam. Uh, they brought it back on Wii, then uh, they did a kind of upgrade version that was available as a digital download on 360 and PlayStation 3. So, really not a basketball person, so I'm probably not going to play it. Yeah, so, ever. well, even for people in the audience who might be interested, NBA Jam on Fire Edition still yeah. available. 15, like, like some cheap, like 15 bucks. It's 15 whatever. monies. I, I, I got it on, I got, they had a sale, they had uh, that and NFL Blitz for $5. Like, not each, like. Nice. $5 total. So, even if I never play the NFL Blitz game, I'll play NBA Jam for 250 Yeah. Wow. So, you know, that's out there. It's more modernized. It's got uh, more players. They did it would add more features as time goes on. Uh, like back in the 16-bit era. shoving? Yeah, back in the 16-bit era, uh, they had NBA Jam Tournament Edition, which, you know, uh, gave you larger rosters for the team. You're still playing two-on-two, two, but there'd be, like, like, three people per team that you could choose from. That's nifty. And, of course, as you see, everybody has their different stats. So, uh, obviously, the secret characters you were playing were pretty good at threes. You were getting a lot of three-pointed shots. Yeah. Uh, it would, they later add things like hot spots, like particular parts of the, the court from which you'd be able to get uh, more points if you did a shot from there. Hmm. So, like, the whole thing would just get wilder and crazier and... Again, it's just like, I think it's a quintessential 90s arcade experience. We're big, loud, and yeah. things happening, flying at you all the time. And it's just really fast-paced, and you just got to go in there and play it. I'll play Star Wars in the arcade. Okay. Well, I think maybe, at least for, is even from that game, you can kind of understand the... Approach of having just that audio-visual bombast yeah. to attract you to play the arcade game. And that's something it was really good at. You know, you'd be, you'd be having uh, Tim Kitzrow shouting all these basketball yeah. phrases. They'd be like, NBA Jam! Beat all 20 soon! <laughs> you know, trying to just trying to attack, track people. And it was really absolutely everywhere. Hmm. In the nineties, so there was a big there was a big time for basketball too, because I mean you know Jordan's playing Pippin, Space Jam, yeah, Rodman, Barkley, Space Jam. I think uh, that 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 is honestly the largest extent of my basketball knowledge is Space Jam. I think uh, probably oh my god uh, from the Celtics. Uh, wow, people are gonna be really mad at me for Chuck for, Finley. For forgetting his name, but yeah, uh, Low key on the Knicks he had Pat Spewing. I mean, uh, oh my God, he was good at threes. He had his ga- he had his own ga- game like an earlier system where he took on Dr. J, and uh, I'm I'm really upset. He's the coach now. Oh my God, legendary Celtics player. His name is just flown out of my head because I'm I'm probably kind of tired. I I can't help you. Yeah, I'm. I think I should look this up before I embarrass Shipping myself up anymore. Boston, whoa, that's all I got. Celtics. 
Wow. Hi ho diddly dee. Yeah, it might be in there. Isn't it technically the Celtics? It should be, but Celtics. there's everybody still so yeah. It's sort of like how everyone says etc when it's actually et cetera. Yes. Because C's in Latin are pronounced as a K. Uh, that's... Which is also why it's actually Kaiser when yes. you're referring to the emperor. However, if you're referring to the salad, the person, I believe, is Spanish hmm. um, or Portuguese. But it turns into Caesar because yeah. of that particular... Yeah, the, uh, the German word Kaiser actually came from... Uh, from the Latin Kaiser. Yes. Which they theorize might mean elephant killer because it just sort of hmm. showed up. That surname just showed up in the Punic Wars, I believe. Punic was with Carthage. Yes? Yes. Um, wow. So are you getting a history lesson whilst we're, he's doing this? Um, this is the thing doing. They believe okay. that Kaiser means elephant killer because uh, Hannibal of Carthage would use elephants as... Sort of like a large cavalry, hmm. and those uh, they would slay the elephants, and that would they started calling them Kaiser. Okay, Larry Bird. Larry Bird. There you Larry go. Larry Bird is who I was trying to remember, and I'm very upset that I couldn't remember that for some reason. That's really weird. There you go. Yeah, it was a huge time for basketball. Uh, I think it's one of his peak popularity times. So, uh, I mean, even as someone who never was really into sports, I kind of was you know would would i own like a phoenix suns jersey and i i bought bas you know basketball shoes and all that stuff so we like only basketball things i ever i had a basketball hoop at once yes um don't have that anymore i think the most basketball thing that i ever had that I ever got any use was uh my tape of space jam there you go who in many of these players were the reason that it was at such a peak of popularity. Uh, I think we're probably talking about the same, you know, people who ended up on the dream team, the Olympic basketball team that pretty much ran roughshod over everybody else. Hmm. So, I think, you know, a whole big storm of... Uh, basketball. Yeah, you know, perfect storm of basketball. And this was a big part of it. All right. Yeah. I like NBA Jam. Ian didn't enjoy it so much. It's imprecise. I hate that. Uh, I think the uh, the new one on 360 and PS3, uh, not too bad. No, I, I don't know. I still have a kind of soft spot in my heart for the old school sprite based ones. But hey, if you enjoyed that, you know, you, this, these are ways you can check it out. And who knows, there, you wouldn't be surprised if you wander in Dave and & Buster's or something and they have an NBA Jam set up. I don't remember seeing it. one. Well, not necessarily knows. every Dave & Buster's. No, I'm yeah. just saying at the one near us. I'm just saying, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if or are some more old arcade has in their retro section or something like that. Yeah. Or one of their newer games. You know, it's, it's fast-paced. I think it's pretty fun, even if the computer cheats like crazy. It, it does... Cheat like crazy. I'll yeah, because they were just that. permanently turboed. Yeah, that was that's pretty rough. I don't know. It's crazy. It's okay. We disagree. That's why we have two hosts on the show. So, but if you enjoyed watching us flounder around in the NBA Jam, please give the episode a like. Uh, subscribe to our channel when we'll play other games which probably don't involve sports. I'm not going to be... I, I don't yet. remember any other sports games we've done so far. Yeah. Not not a lot. Uh, I don't... We do, do like Kirby. We did, yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but hey, if there's other things you'd like us to play, uh, suggest in the comments. If yeah. I have it, or we can reasonably get a hold of it, and we'll be... Just dig it up yep. somewhere. We'll check it out. Like, you know, digging up some copies of E.T., No. No, I don't even own an Atari. It's not happening. Anyway. Yeah. I've been Dan Masterini. You can find me on Twitter at, at NewTypeCult. 
I'm Ian Butterfield. You can find me on Twitter at Ian G Butterfield. We also have links down below to mm-hmm. our Facebook. Yes. Facebook.com backslash Retro Game Connect. Our Tumblr, RetroGameConnect.tumblr.com. And I'm sure our Twitter's down there too, but I don't know the address for that. It's off the Retro top of my Game head. CNCT because I, I couldn't fit the whole thing. Ah, well, there you go. Yeah. I had to remove the vowels from the last word. Gonna be down there. Oh, they're all down there, so you can just open the description and click on. Unless you're watching this on a phone and you have this sideways. Mm. I just realized that. But then you can just flip it back. It's, yeah. it's most annoying when you're watching it on a TV, like with a, with a mm. YouTube app. Yeah. Because then you can't get the descriptions at all, which no. drives me crazy. I don't like that at all. Crazy! What I also don't like is that you have to like while the video is playing. Which is the most, when the most, like, logical time to do it is after you finish watching it. Yeah. No, it's weird. I don't, I don't know. So, there. but anyhow, find us on our social media. media. Talk to us. Tell us if there are games you guys want us to play. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. No promises. Um, and subscribe because mm-hmm. we'll have more episodes. Oh, yeah. Go back and watch old episodes so you can get references that are made. And I think we might float around a blooper reel at some point. So you're you're really behind that. Well, I, I don't love know. Yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to, I, again, I don't want to make any promises, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe in the yeah. future I'll, I will hand you some footage and you'll be like, here. <laughs> I'm going to be editing the show. You can do the blooper reel. Have fun. Future. It doesn't have a weekly deadline. <laughs> All right, so I think that pretty much covers it. So I hope you will join us next time on Retro Game Connect.